hear me okay? Yes, welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us, Gary. We're all really excited, as you can imagine. Um, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. I probably don't need to introduce you, but I think uh, Gary joined Spurs in 1982 from Bristol Rovers. He was with us for 16 years, played 477 games, scored 27 goals, got 16 England caps. And it was a very successful period in our history where we won an FA Cup and a UEFA Cup. So, Gary, welcome and, and thank you so much. So, oh, thank you. Um, you've, had quite a, uh, you've had quite a lockdown from the Spurs perspective. Now, it's um, a real pleasure to be with you today. And obviously, uh, you know, the LGBTQ plus supporters group has been fantastic in, you know, in helping us to make sure that uh, our inclusivity programmes are all as best as they possibly can be. So uh, your help is much appreciated. Oh, well, thank you. So that means a lot. Um, Gary coming from you and I'm sure everyone really really appreciates it we've got a load of questions for you today um, and I'd just like to encourage everybody that's here to if there's anything else that comes up please pop it in the chat and we'll try and get it to um, get it to Gary um, while we're talking I think our first question is going to come from Sylvie Sylvie oh I think Lee can you take Sylvie off mute There we go. All right. Hello. Hi, Sylvie. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yes, yes. Not too bad, thank you. Good. I'd like to ask you, yeah. um, if all the Tottenham players you played alongside, yeah. who was your favourite and why? Goodness me, who's my favourite Tottenham player? Um, yeah. Oh, dear, that is a fantastic question, uh, question Sylvie. Um I mean, I was so lucky. I mean, when I started Spurs, I was in the group with Oz Yardiles, Steve Perriman, Ray Clements, God rest his soul, uh, Ricky Villa, Steve Archibald, um, Glenn Hoddle. And then throughout my time, Craig and Chrissy Waddle, Gary Lineker, Paul Gascoigne, Teddy Sheringham, Jurgen Klinsmann, David Ginola. I mean, the list goes on and on. So when people ask me who's my favourite player that I've played with, I probably, it's difficult for me to choose between Glenn Hoddle and Paul Gascoigne. Um, closely followed by Osyar Diles, Jurgen Klinsmann and David Ginola. So uh, there's quite a, a spectrum there, but there's not just one of them. I say, oh, wow, he was by far the best. I played with so many you know, players of the highest quality. And uh, yeah, I had a fantastic 16 years at the club. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. I mean, that was a tough question. Um, <laughs> But that's okay. I think they're all tough questions, hopefully. Uh, yeah, I think they might be. Um, I've got one here that was sent in by, by Moggy, who asked, who's the best foreign player that you played with? Oh, again, just mentioned two of them in Ozzy Ardiles and uh, Jürgen Klinsmann. Um, obviously, uh, I'm very close friends with both of those still and still speak to them. I spoke to Jürgen last week. In fact, he called during the Man City game. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, it wasn't the most uh, exciting of conversations. Things didn't go too well for us on that day. But now we keep in close touch. Jürgen now lives in America. Um, uh, he lives just below Los Angeles, in a place called Newport Beach. Uh, so, yes, we keep in touch regularly, um, you yeah, know, about football, about his family. His son uh, was playing in Switzerland. His son's a goalkeeper. You may not know that. But his son's a goalkeeper, was playing in Germany, now playing in Switzerland and uh they go back to the States to join the club there. Uh, his daughter is an equestrian rider. So um, Jürgen, um, during the lockdowns and things, he's been able to get out and he always wants to do something. And uh, Jürgen's been taking uh, helicopter lessons and uh, I think he's now got himself a pass, got himself a helicopter and goes to all the uh, his daughter's events and uh, go and see her around America. So uh, he's living a good life. Um, you know, he still likes to get back into football, but... Uh, so, yes, I keep in close contact with them. Also with Eric Torsvet, who was, uh, ah. when he first came over, was my room partner. And uh, Eric is also a very close friend. In fact, Eric, I got married in the Kruger Park in South Africa. And uh, Eric and his wife uh, came over for our wedding there. So, so yes, uh, I'm very close to Eric as well. 
Lovely. And it's really interesting to hear that, actually, Gary, because I think we often forget as fans that, you know, you're doing your job. And like all of us, you meet good friends while you're working and you stay kind of connected to your friends. So that's those are really nice stories to hear. Thank you. I've just seen a, a question from Nicolas Rojas come into the uh, into the chat, which I, uh, I actually really like, sort of slightly related to this. So, Nicholas, would you like to ask Gary that question? Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Hi, Nicholas. Yes, very well. Thank you. Yourself? Yes, not too bad. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, your hair's looking good, mate. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, it's, it's kind of uh, locked up. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to ask you, uh, so if you had the chance to, to take two players from the current Spurs squad back to the 80s to play, to play alongside, and you had the chance to do the same with two players from your time to take... Uh, to today's squad, which four players would you take? My goodness. Um, okay, current squad. Uh, current squad, I would probably take uh, Harry Kane and Son. Um, I think they've been outstanding this season. In my opinion, Son's been our best player for the last two or three years with his assists and his goals. Obviously, Harry's a world class player. Um, and so I take those back to me uh, to the 80s. And 80s players that I bring with me now. Um, I would bring probably, oh, it's a difficult question from the 80s, uh, Glenn Hoddle and, um, I'm not sure when Gazza joined, it may have been, uh, if he was there, uh, Glenn Hoddle and Paul Gascoigne, I love exciting, wow. uh, innovative, a midfield player with a bit of guile, bit of a uh, bit of talent, bit of ingenuity. I think they can definitely bring that to the uh, to the current squad. It's what we need in the current team at the moment. But hopefully, I think after last week's excellent uh, European performance, I believe that Deli Ali and uh, Gareth Bale are making it very difficult for Jose to pick his team at the moment because uh, yeah. I think they made a good statement in those games that they're fit and ready and uh, available. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would definitely bring uh, those to our squad at the moment. But fantastic question. That's Love a, it, Gary. That, and a great answer, Gary. Thank you. Because I think that, you know, I think guile and ingenuity definitely is something that we're, that we have been potentially uh, missing more recently. And excitingly, I think you're right about Delhi and, and, um, and Gareth Bale. Um, I think we've got a question from Rach about opposition players. Rach, are you here? I am, yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, Gary. Um, so we've spoken about um, players you've, you've play, played with, but was there any player in particular that was on an opposition team that you enjoyed playing against the most? Oh, Rachel, so again, a lovely question. Um, if I'm being honest, I loved playing at the biggest stadiums in the world. I love playing against the biggest names in the world. Um, and... People say to me, well, Craig, who, who did you fear the most as a, an opponent? I never feared anybody. Um, I always just so look forward to playing against uh, the biggest names in the game. Um, probably there are a few players that will come to mind. Um, I played against Marco van Basten when he was at his height of his career uh, for AC Milan, Rude Hullet. Um, when we were in the, won the 84 UEFA Cup in that run up to the Cup, we played Fairnord. Um, and we beat Fairnord at home. Uh, I think it was 4-1. And I had to man mark a certain player called Johan Cruyff. Wow. So uh, Cruyff obviously was a, you know, one of the best players ever in history. Uh, in fact, it's quite funny. People ask me, you say also about my best players for Spurs. And a uh, bit of a trick question because uh, obviously I played alongside uh, in Aussie's testimonial. I think for the first time in history, the club actually got it right by putting three very workmanlike players alongside me. Uh, so there, there was me in the middle of midfield. Alongside me, I had Ozzy Ardiles, Glenn Hoddle and Diego Maradona. So uh, <laughs> I was a able to show my true talents on that day. Uh, not quite, but there we go. Um, and also, uh, about, ooh, nine, ten years ago, I was selected for a FIFA World Eleven team to play in Cape Town um, against an African team to celebrate Nelson Mandela's uh, 90th birthday celebrations. And I mean, the African team had a, had a very good team, Samuel Etu and some great players, obviously 
on their side. Uh, but the FIFA team, we had Zubi Zaretta, Butch Bueno, Christian Carambo, we had Rude Hullet. We had a certain uh, number nine, who I played alongside, called Pele. So I was able to play uh, alongside Pele and against, uh, as mentioned, against uh, Croy. Now, why that's a slightly funny story is because when I was a boy, I had two tortoises. I was about seven or eight years of age. And obviously, uh, big football fans growing up in a footballing family. And uh, we had to choose the names for our two tortoises. And they were called Pele and Cruyff. So and literally uh, 15 years later, I got to play against one of them and alongside the other. So uh, quite a very funny story. But uh, where that came from, I don't know. But I thought I'd just throw that into the conversation. <laughs> Thank what, you, Gary. Thank you. I think what I mean, I think about this, Gary, frankly, is that somewhere some of those people, the ones who are still with us, are having a conversation and telling people about the time they played with Gary Mabbott, frankly. <laughs> um, so we've been talking about other players. Andy, Andy, are you here for a, a question about managers that you asked? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, thank you. Hi, Gary. Um, Andy. Uh, yeah, um, in your illustriously long playing career at Spurs, um, of all the managers you played under, who who is your uh, favourite and also um, who do you think got the best out of you as a player? Oh, um, I mean, you won't believe this, but I played, I was there for 16 years and I played under 10 different people as managers. So that shows the turnaround it was uh, during that era. Um, always the person that signed you, I think you always have a, a strong uh, relationship towards. Uh, Keith Berkinshaw was a manager at the time. Having said that, um, it was actually, I'm not quite sure how much Keith Bergenshaw knew about me because it was Bill Nicholson that actually uh, brought me to the club. So he was the chief scout of the club at the time. He'd seen me play numerous times for Bristol Rovers and for England Youth and 21s. And when he realised I was available, I, Bill uh, phoned me in Bristol. I remember picking up the phone and uh, gentleman at the end saying, oh, it's Bill Nicholson here. And uh, honestly, uh, I was truly shocked. Uh, he said, look, Gary, I think you could become a potential Spurs player. Uh, I'd like to have a chat with you. So I drove up to London. I met with Bill at the uh, at the old White Hart Lane Stadium. Uh, I've got to be honest, as I drove through those raw iron gates, I just thought this is where I've got to be. Uh, met with Bill. Uh, what a person Bill is um, or was. He then took me to the training ground. And it's weird because I walked into the, uh, the canteen at the training ground and... Everyone I'd seen in the canteen, they were all players, you know, all international, you know, superstar players. Uh, I'd only ever seen them before, either on Match of the Day or on Top of the Pops. Uh, so it was very, very weird. Um, and then met Keith Brokenshaw. And again, I think it was Keith, they said to me, look, Gary, you know, I haven't really followed you too much, but Bill's given me the recommendation and I'm happy to go with that. So, um, you know, that, that was, uh, so I think Keith, I mean, Bill Nicholson, I think, is my all-time favourite. Uh, him and Darky, his wife, uh, we were good friends for a number of years. Um, so, but uh, who brought the best out of me? Um, oh, again, that's a good question because, I mean, for me, a manager, yeah, I always like to feel that um, I brought the best out of myself to some degree, meaning that if I was struggling in a certain area, then I would work on that. When I was a boy... I was right-footed naturally, uh, but then when I was about you know, 10, 11 years of age, um, I used to go out in the back garden, we had a brick wall and a tennis ball and just use my left foot for you know, hours on end uh, for months. And then by the time I joined Spurs, my left foot was as good as my right foot. So any weaknesses I worked on myself, I mean, obviously working with managers on team play, getting the best out of players, that was always a, a great thing to do. Um, uh, I was a person that... I sort of, I was quite good at generally motivating myself uh, because I had a very, a very high sort of uh, demand level of my performances that I had to stick to and uh, attain. And if I didn't attain that, then I'd be hugely disappointed. Um, but uh, I think Terry Venables probably was one of the most, uh, I think, the best managers as far as all round dealing with uh, changes during a match. I mean, so if you have a team game plan and then you go out to play Manchester United and suddenly they've got a different scheme going, a different plan going that you're expecting. 
Now, most managers would wait till half time and then go into the change room at half time and discuss it and put it right. Terry could see things like that immediately and he would try and change it from the side of the pitch. I mean, even to the degree whereby he would call for one of our fullbacks to go down injured, pretending. I then come over and our physio would come on and tell me what had to be done. So, uh, you know, things have worked in that way occasionally. Um, but Terry was also a great manager. Uh, but his man management skills, I think, were were very good. Um, so, so yes, um, yeah, I was quite fortunate. I had a numerous different managers, but uh, overall, I think Keith Bergenshaw, Terry Venables, uh, but above all, I think Bill Nicholson, who wasn't my manager, but obviously was the man that brought me to the club. Thank you very much. Yeah. I think Bill Nicholson for all of us. Um, even yeah. for those of us who weren't fortunate enough to watch any of his teams play, is the ultimate boss when yeah. it comes to Spurs, yeah. frankly. Oh, excuse me, sorry, I'm just having a little sip of coffee. Do you know my cup? It's a, it's a Disney cup, Lion oh. King. I am the biggest Disney fan in the world, so all the old Disney movies I can watch 24-7. Well, given so, they're asking you questions then today, Gary, we're going to have to ask you which is your favourite Disney movie. Well, I think the cup in front of you has given you a good clue. Well, I've got so many Disney mugs in my kitchen, so there we go. Fantastic. Um, is Steve here? Steve, are you here? Maybe Steve's not here. We'll come back to that. Um, Craig, you've got a question for Gary, I think. Yeah. Hi, Gary. Uh, in 91, the FA Cup final against uh, Forest was a magnificent achievement for you personally. You're captain of Tottenham Hotspur, you're leading the boys up those famous steps and then lifting that trophy. What, what was that moment like? Well, again, I mean, thanks for the question. It was a, uh, I get asked a question quite often and uh, I, I never stop enjoying reliving that moment. Uh, you know, we won the UEFA Cup in 1984. Again, that was absolutely incredible. Um, European nights at White Hart Lane used to be so special. The atmosphere you created was I don't know why, but it seemed to be on a different level. Um, used to wear all white for the European Games uh, and beating uh, and electing the final at White Hart Lane, our home ground. Uh, what an amazing occasion. And uh, remember after the game then, we all got changed. We went out, it was by, about midnight by the time we got out because they had extra time, penalties. And there was a, an old building with a, a balcony uh, at the front of the stadium. And we went out there with the UEFA Cup. And by this day, it must be about 100,000 Spurs fans you know, blocking the high road. Uh, so that was a fantastic evening. But the FA Cup in 91, um, it was when the final whistle went. Um, I mean, the final itself, obviously, Paul Gascoigne got his injuries early on. The first half was a disaster for us. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. We had the injury to Gaza. We lost our talisman, who basically had been, uh, you know, all the way through the whole FA Cup run that year. He'd been outstanding. Uh, we lost him after about you know, 20, 25 minutes. Um, and then we had to sort of uh, you know, reorganise and uh, get back into shape for the rest of the game. We were already 1-0 down. Uh, the goal that Stuart Pierce scored should have been disallowed. Um, I was on the end of the wall and I think it was Paul Glover walked behind me and just got two hands on me. He just literally rugby tackled me to the ground. As I was going down, I saw the ball fly where I should have been standing and uh, go into the top corner, hoping the referee had seen it. He hadn't. So we were 1-0 down. We had a perfectly good goal from Gary Lineker, disallowed for offside. He wasn't offside. Uh, the keeper saved a penalty. So everything that could go wrong was going wrong. And then second half, we came out and uh, got the equaliser through Paul Stewart. Uh, and then, obviously, Nimes come on for Gaza. We had a corner on the right and uh, I'm in the box. And Nime put up two arms in the air, which meant it's coming to the far post to me. So I made a run towards Nime. I've checked out. And I've managed to gain about a yard on Des Walker, who was marking me. And Nines hit a fantastic ball into the box, coming straight from my head, about you know five yards out, in the middle of the goal. And uh, Des Walker, in desperation, just threw himself at the ball and rocketed it into the top corner. Far better than I could have done, I'm sure. Um, but uh, when the final whistle went, uh, first of all, you go and obviously shake hands with the opposition. Um, I had a huge amount of respect for Brian Clough. Uh, what he achieved in the game and uh, he was a fantastic character should have been an England manager in my opinion uh, but he never won the FA Cup uh, but uh, we also went around the, the team of course they had uh, Steve Hodge who obviously was a, uh, a player with us at Spurs 
Um, and in fact, in that team also was uh, was Roy Keane at the time. Uh, but obviously, I went over to Des Walker, who was a, a teammate with um, for England. Uh, and obviously, you know, I consoled Des because obviously I'd been there before and uh, it's not a nice feeling. Uh, but then there's quite a way. By the time you do all that, go around and congratulate each other, go to the opposition, there's like a 10, 15 minute wait before you've got those steps. And it's so weird because being in a footballing family, Cup Final Day was a very special day when I was growing up. It was like the only day where football was shown live on TV. Uh, you know, the FA Cup final was shown worldwide on TV. It was probably the oldest competition in the world. And you just start about nine o'clock in the morning with it's a cup final knockout and how the teams got there and breakfast with the team, lunch with the team, traveling with the team, on the door. And it's all chaotic. Uh, but you used to watch it all and still literally at home. The final whistle had gone, and then myself and my dad and my brother would go to the local football pitch and go and have a game of football. Um, and I stood at the bottom of the steps at Wembley, remembering all those times we've actually uh, you know, been at home watching it, and now it's actually going to be me walking up those steps. And also, I th again, things you think about are so weird. I remember standing there waiting, and I thought about myself and my brother. Uh, he's two and a half years older than me. We used to play a football game called Sabutio, which you put on a uh, pitch and you flick flick the players and whatever. Um, and he always used to beat me. And then we had one FA Cup final. And I remember beating him 2-1. And I can remember picking up this tiny little FA Cup plastic trophy and running around the whole house and garden with it held aloft above my head. And I stood at the bottom of the steps just thinking, I'm actually been walking up those steps in a minute and lifting the actual trophy. And going up there, getting the, you know, walking up the steps, going along the, you know, the the gangway, obviously there are a lot of uh, dignitaries there, Prince Charles, Princess Diana, the Duke and Duchess of Kent, and the Duchess of Kent presents me with a cup, and uh, that moment when you turn and you share that moment with all the Spurs fans in the stadium, all the Spurs fans watching globally on TV, and I lifted the trophy, you know, that is a moment that I'll never forget. It's such an amazing moment, uh, and the noise that hits you. So yes, uh, yeah, that was a fantastic day, and uh, you know, say for myself, it's one of you know, the highlights of my career. Wow, I don't know about everybody else, but Gary, you've just the, your description there is just perfect. It's given me goosebumps. <laughs> I mean, I remember what I was doing when you lifted the cup at that time, and I'm sure many others here do too. You don't um, look old enough to be watching that. Oh my goodness! I I first went to a game in 1980, so it was the oh, season, right. It was the season before you. Uh, yeah, Before you joined. I think it was it was Chris Hutton's first season. I was always a fan of Chris Hutton's as well. I like Did defenders. It? When I played football, I was play, always played in defense. Right. Um, so uh, I've I've got, well, often got an affinity with uh, with defenders. Um, I'm conscious of the time, and I know that Pete Hayne from the Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust wanted to say something, and then we'll throw over to a question that's related to this. Pete. Yeah. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Gary. It was so. Um, I. Think... I Thank you for the phone call that I received on my uh, 65th <coughs> birthday uh, in December. And I know you've been making so many calls to our fans during lockdown. Uh, it's just really to say thank you so much for the work you're doing. You might not realise, but it really does have an impact in lifting people's spirits when they're in receipt of one of those phone calls. Absolutely oh. brilliant. Thank you very much from all of the fans for all of your hard work for the club. No, Pete, thank you very much. Uh, no, it's been something which I've been doing now, crikey, for uh, just about a year uh, when the lockdown started last March. And we discussed it at the club and how can we keep in touch with our supporters who are in the vulnerable age group. And we decided to make phone calls on special occasions, birthdays. Um, and so I started back then. In fact, uh, Earlier today, I did my 2,300th call. So uh, it's been quite a lot of calls during that time. Incredible. Uh, one gentleman, one lady was 106 years of age. Amazing. He'd been sporting Spurs for over 100 years. Wow. A gentleman who was 100 years of age, 99, 98, a lot in their 80s. Um, and a lot of people out there, are Pete, and why it's been important to do is that there are some very lonely people. And once they... Some people had lost partners um, to COVID and things. And, you know, 
it's very, very difficult for them just to have somebody that can possibly have a chat to them, you know, lift their spirits a bit, bring a smile to their face. And that's what it's been all about. I mean, I've had some most amazing conversations with some wonderful people out there. Uh, and people say, my 2,300 guy, that must my years be bored stiff. And no, every single conversation is different. Everybody's got their own different story of their favourite player or their first game for Spurs or their favourite memory of Spurs. And, you know, I think we've done quite a bit of publicity. Um, we did some on uh, the BBC Good Morning uh, Breakfast TV shows, uh, did a CNN one. Uh, but the main reason we did the publicity, because the first thousand calls, no one knew we were doing it because... We're just doing, we're doing it for any publicity, but just to get it done to help our fans. Um, but then I had a call from the BBC saying, can we record your thousandth call? And I thought about it. I thought, well, I'd be quite happy doing it under the radar. But I thought about it and said, well, if we can get it out there, that there are so many lonely people that, and just ask people who, family, neighbours and friends who they know who are in their 70s and 80s, just pick up the phone, you know, once, twice a week, have a chat to them. So to encourage people to do that. So uh, that's hopefully has had a, a bit of an impact. Um, as I say, there's some great conversations uh, during that period of time. And uh, yeah, a lot of people put the phone down on me, think it's a prank or think uh, I'm winding them up and it's not me. Uh, so yes, I've had some some quite strange and some funny conversations. Um, but say o overall, it's been uh, very rewarding and very worthwhile. So um, and most importantly, if we come across, if you talk to somebody for 10, 15 minutes, uh, you generally get an idea if they're not in a good place, if they're struggling. Uh, at the Tottenham Hospital Foundation, we have healthcare experts that can assist people. So if I feel you, I can pass that on and uh, and that could be done. So yes, uh, yeah, it's been a good way of keeping in touch. And uh, let's say it's been, uh, it's been quite rewarding. Good. Thank you so much, Gary. That's wonderful, Gary. Thank you. And, you know, from a proud Lily White's perspective, we often talk about the power of football and how we can use our national game and our love for our football team to to really, um, you know, engage with people that might be struggling with something or to make some kind of lasting change. And I think that's exactly what you've been doing there. And it's something that I know that for also from a Proudly Lights perspective that we're really proud of. We've got a very active WhatsApp chat. We're often talking about you and how amazing all these things are that you've been doing. So thank you very much. Um, just a, a quick silly question now, really. When you're watching the football during the pandemic, do you have the crowd sounds on or off? I have the sounds off. I cannot stand the canned noise in the background. The, this, all, the timing is totally wrong virtually the whole time. Um, I can't watch it if I'm being totally honest. And uh, uh, I didn't really say this, but I find it very hard to watch any game for 90 minutes. Um, oh. I feel so sorry for the players and for the support, uh, for the uh, staff. Yeah. What it has shown is that football is just not football as we know it without fans in the stadium. And it's the fans that create the passion, the intensity, the excitement. It's the fans that the players respond to. And you've got players now having to play in the biggest football league in the world under training ground conditions. And it's so difficult for them to you know, motivate themselves, to get themselves up for it. Uh, and so, yes, I feel for that. And that's why we're seeing such ridiculous results at the moment. Mm. Um, and all season. I mean, last year, Liverpool absolutely pulverised the whole Premier League. And yet they're lying in sixth place in the table, uh, losing their last four home games. Last time was 1923. Everyone starts seeing was throwing away points left, right and centre. Man City have, have come strong at the moment. Fortunately for us, the League Cup was supposed to be played this weekend, I think. Mm. Um, and it was delayed by two months because that's fantastic in my opinion because come two months time they could well be going for the Champions League final FA Cup final for the title and the uh, League Cup will be the least of their aims so it will be the biggest of ours probably along with the Europa Cup and obviously getting top four but I think we've got a great chance of winning a cup this year Jose in his first two years at Manchester United sorry first year at Manchester United when the Europa Cup and the League Cup, and he's determined to, to do the same with us. And so, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of the season ahead. I think there's a lot more exciting things to come from Spurs. Um, I think there's a, you know, I think the manager uh, is starting to, I think, feel that uh, 
maybe he got got to get some more um, inventiveness into the midfield area as well. And I say that was shown in midweek. So hopefully today we'll see that. Uh, I'm hoping for a I'm going for a, a three clear goal victory today at least. So I'm say I've always been optimistic. Um, but again, obviously uh, we haven't got too much longer. But uh, just like to say again that. The proud Lily Whites, the work that you're doing. I mean, at Spurs, the inclusivity. I mean, no matter what race, color, creed, sexual orientation, gender, you know, everybody has to be included to the maximum degree. And you know, anything that uh, you feel more could be done, please put it forward. Uh, I know that you're spreading the word incredibly well, um, but uh, it has to be about. Say, I've been part of the Spurs uh, family now for the last 38 years. And whilst big business uh, comes into the sport and you know, people think things change, the most important thing about the club are the fans, the community and uh, the work that we do in those areas. So, yes, uh, it's, it's a vital part of the work that we do. And obviously, uh, probably you know, it's a vital cog in that wheel for us. Well, I, I think uh, there are all sorts of there are still some questions in there, but that's a, I'm conscious that we've gone slightly over time. And that's a wonderful way to end that. So thank you so much, Gary. I'm sure I talk for everybody here um, when I say it's been a real sort of honour to, to hear the answers to all your questions, particularly your FA Cup answer. That description was like something else. I think somebody said in the chat that it was a generous, a wonderful and generous description, which I think is absolutely right. So thank you so much. And in fact, if I don't know if we want to take everyone off... Um, off mute for a second, Lee, so we can give Gary a round of applause and a bit of a cheer. I think that'd be quite nice. Thank so, you so much, Gary. Thank, thank you, you Gary. 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 Thank you. Hey. It's been an absolute hey. pleasure. Hey. Come on. I hope you will get chance to meet again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. Enjoy our good victory this afternoon. Yeah, bye, Gary. Cheers. Take care. Cheers, Gary. Bye, Gary. Bye.